all of these uh, big dick deviants is all catching hell in 2024. It's up for all of them. It don't matter if you Diddy or whoever you is, T.G. Jakes, any of them. The, all, every, all lies will be exposed. That's all. And, 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 and anyone who takes that the wrong way know why they take it the wrong way. So far, multiple women have come forward with their own accusations against Diddy. Starting with Cassie Ventura, Diddy's ex-girlfriend of 10 years, who filed a lawsuit filled with allegations of abuse, sexual assault, and rape. Things got interesting because Combs's ex, her name was Cassandra, she went by Cassie, and she filed a federal lawsuit against him in New York alleging years of assaults. Now, again, they dated for like more than 10 years, so she obviously was very close to him and knew his lifestyle. Her lawsuit contained graphic allegations that he raped her in 2018, that he physically abused her, that he intimidated her, that he made her have sex with male escorts while he watched. The lawsuit also alleged that he blew up another artist's car, his name was Kid Cudi, in order to stop him from seeing Cassie rom romantically when him and Cassie split up. I mean, again, all of this sounds insane, if it's true. Well, Kid Cudi thought the accusations were true. He said, yes, that is factually what happened. But of course, Diddy denied those allegations. And he instead came out and said that Cassie was simply trying to blackmail him for $30 million. And by the way, that is plausible, right? We've seen tons of those instances, especially in the era of Me Too. And do you fight back when he says up? You know, I would. I do have a slick mouth. Because you're. <laughs> and it's okay. Yeah, but yeah no, she talks slick together. a lot. She's all really. We, we work together chemistry. well, and um, I don't know. I it, I guess the music will just have to speak for itself. People hear it. Um, I'm really excited for it. I've been working on it for a long time. Yeah, what, what she, 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 she has great instincts. There's a lot of things that people just, that's all people can see. They can't like really see past that. And and I think that's what one of the things that's gonna rock people to sleep this year on her. She, she has that, that, that special thing. I have the lecture of love and it'll be coming out um, probably end of the year, top of the year, but we're gonna make sure we set it up right. We're gonna really do some unique strategic things. Yep. He was in that man's house and he saw that man's wife who was like this. I was watching Puff. I think Puff was looking all the he saw this, this this white woman. It was bottles on bottles on bottles around her. It was lit. Puff jumped out. Me and Cassie sitting next to each other. My wife right here, Cassie right here. The nigga jumped off the bar, came over and said, yo, yo, Cassie, tomorrow, I want you to shave the side of your head. And I was like, I'm like, what the f kind of request is that? <laughs> like, so when I'm like, so when I look up there, this white woman side of her head was shaved, my nigga, and the bitch looked good with it. So I was looking at Cass, I was like, well, I, I was like, you're not about to do that, are you? She said, well, I mean, whatever Sean wants, I'm gonna do. So, so I wanted to get us all together so we could get this. Um, everybody can hear from me how um, focused and excited I am about the project. I wanted, you know, Cassie to. Um, Everybody in me, Cassie. Y'all on my left. Cassie. And um, hear the story directly from my mouth. And then um, we can get down to some business about just so we can be on the same page of what the plan is. Crystal McGinney soon followed with her allegation, saying that she was assaulted in 2003 in Diddy's recording studio. On May 21st, model Crystal McKinney filed her lawsuit against Sean Combs, Bad Boy Entertainment Holdings, Sean John Clothing LLC, and Universal Music Entertainment Group. And the statute says that it revives any claims against, quote, a party who commits, directs, enables, we'll talk about that, participates in, or conspires in the commission of a crime of violence gen motivated by gender, has a cause of action against such party in any court of competent jurisdiction. Lane explains that when she was 17 years old back in 1998, McKinney won MTV's first model mission competition. She was given a modeling contract and her career started to take off with her appearing in all sorts of major magazines. And then in 2003, when she was 22 years old, McKinney says she was invited to attend a men's fashion week event being held in New York. Now the person who invited McKinney is only referred to in the filing as the designer. But according to McKinney, quote, the designer told plaintiff that he would be introducing her to Combs, which could advance her modeling career. The designer began to direct plaintiff's appearance as he sought to ensure Combs found her attractive. The designer then handpicked a black leather coat with a fur hood, a translucent chiffon, 
beige V-cut shirt, fur-lined handbag, and jewel-encrusted jeans for plaintiff to wear to the event. Due to the traumatic events to occur later, plaintiff saved the unwashed clothing from that night in her closet where they remain in a plastic wrap. Wow. Then he said he had the power to help her career, continued to be very flirtatious. He also allegedly kept plying her with alcohol. And at the end of the night, or the end of the dinner, he allegedly told her he wants to get to know her better. McKinney says she accepted her first hit of marijuana, but now believes it was laced with some other narcotic. McKinney claims that Combs then led her to a bathroom where he allegedly forced her to perform oral sex on him, despite her saying no. Quote, upon standing and walking, plaintiff felt more and more woozy and then lost consciousness. Plaintiff awakened in shock to find herself in a taxi cab heading back to the designer's apartment. The lawsuit says that after the alleged assault, McKinney didn't get as much work in modeling or acting. Eventually, she couldn't get any work at all. Upon information and belief, Combs had plaintiff blackballed in the industry and utilized his significant influence to impede plaintiff's career growth. Plaintiff became severely depressed as she began to blame herself for the assault and for sabotaging her own career. The assault led plaintiff into a tailspin of anxiety and depression. In or about 2004, plaintiff attempted suicide and was hospitalized. McKinney also states that she was married from 2006 to 2010, but according to her, her relationship fell apart because she had a mental breakdown connected to this traumatic experience. And this all goes, by the way, to the harm element of a lawsuit. What did you suffer? What are you seeking? McKinney's lawyers state in the complaint, quote, as a direct and proximate result of the aforementioned crime of violence and gender motivated violence, plaintiff has sustained and will continue to sustain monetary damages, physical injury, pain and suffering, and serious psychological and emotional distress, entitling her to an award of compensatory and punitive damages, injunctive and declaratory relief, attorney's fees and costs, and other remedies as this court may deem appropriate. When Prost claims B3 forced her to take ecstasy and have sex with one of his former girlfriends, Kim Porter. When she met Mr. Combs, Miss Lampro shared with him her dreams of working in the fashion industry. And Mr. Combs promised to mentor her and help her by introducing her to music and fashion industry executives, as well as assisting her with finding work. Mr. Combs love bombed her. He showered her with gifts and flowers, as evidenced by one of the cards that accompanied the flowers that Mr. Combs sent Miss Lampros for Valentine's Day in 1994. A photo of the card from the New York florist, The Daily Blossom, says, Happy Valentine's Day, love Puffy. Mr. Combs went so far as to invite Miss Lampros to his first Father's Day celebration, and a picture of that invitation was included in this complaint as well. Now, from there, the complaint says that what started out as a love bombing, flirty relationship quickly went south. This is according to Lampros. Quote, upon information and belief, what Mr. Combs displayed as kind gestures quickly manifested into an aggressive, coercive, and abusive relationship based on sex. These acts were not isolated to the state of New York as Mr. Combs would fly Miss Lampros to Atlanta to see him, where they would spend time together. Miss Lampros would also fly to Miami to see Mr. Combs at his home. The filing includes two photos of Lampros purportedly at Combs' home in Florida. According to Miss Lampros, Mr. Combs had a terrible temper and often threatened to harm her if she failed to do what he said, if he witnessed her talking to other men, or if she failed to take his phone calls. According to Miss Lampros, she was also not allowed to talk about her relationship with Mr. Combs to anyone because he didn't want anyone to know he was seeing her because she is a white woman. Not to forget that a lot of theories revolved around the death of Kim. Homicide, pneumonia, overdose, we might never know. It was a bad, it was a bad, like there's a lot of weird shit that I didn't even know that like, but they were like, you know, they'd do photo shoots together or whatever. They were, they were sort of friendly. Like they'd, yeah. they'd hang out, like we'd see them out downtown and like I'd hang out with her. Not so much with, I think it was already sort of over there, but like she was really afraid of him and it, Really? Yeah. Like this goes back years. And so like, and she was having these conversations with my ex. I was like, uh, like, I, I don't know what, like. A, a lot of people believe that whatever happened there happened with the, the woman afterwards, which was Cassie. And then supposedly No, it, like, like, like I said, like I didn't, you sort of don't think about these things until now you like, you go back and you're like, holy, like I distinctly remember when my, Vanessa was like, calls me and was like, hey man, Kim Porter died. I go, what? Like we saw her like a couple of weeks, whatever it was, it was, you know, and, and she goes, yeah, man, there, she was sort of always in fear of something happening. And I was like, you know, maybe it's natural, but like, not a lot of people die at 47 of pneumonia. Like, you know what I mean? It's like, 
Wow. Uh, especially people who, you know, obviously there's, good shape. There's a, there's a shit ton of rumors. There's Again, and I'm not, I, I'm actually not trying to fuel any kind of rumor, but I, yeah, yeah. I definitely, like, that. that's a conversation I had. Like, you know, yeah, someone yeah, yeah, who yeah. knew her well, you know, was like friend, like they text, like, was like, something. she was something, like, something, something, she's like, something. She did not believe that was just natural. Kim died from pneumonia, but there's the first coroner's report that said it was ruled a homicide and they found toxins in her body to prove that she had been poisoned. You know, they, they have poisons that create heart attack and pneumonia-like symptoms. Then right after that, Al had a meeting and I was survivors and the, and, and the late of Uptown Records, they were all writing tell-all books. Andre was writing a book right before he died. Heavy D was working on a book before he died. Kim Porter was working on a book before she died. I'll be sure was working on the documentary of his life. And then he goes into a coma. Has Puffy ever been in a coma? Has anything happened to him? He must be the luckiest motherfucker because it seems like everybody that worked at Uptown Records from the very beginning just him. Not only are celebs cutting ties with the alleged sexual abuser, Sean Combs, companies have started to cut ties with him as well. And he was even forced to resign as the CEO of Revolt TV. All of the allegations, um, but there are clearly going to be some repercussions and now they're feeling it at one of his companies in his empire and that is one of his biggest actually. Yeah, uh, Revolt TV. Um, we found out this morning that uh, Diddy is stepping down Temporarily. as the chairman. Temporarily. That's, yeah, they do, they are, I, I think it is important to note that they say temporarily right. uh, he's stepping down, which always made me think immediately, well, when do you come back? Right. Um, <laughs> and that's the tough thing that he's got to juggle now because he's clearly, Diddy is plugged in and he knows what people are talking about, court of public opinion. Obviously, the, D the Cassie lawsuit is settled, but these other two, um, we don't know what's going to happen. They, they, linger, they right. may end up in court. Guys, I think this is a very big deal. I do not think this is just, it doesn't sound to me like somebody who's just doing something to temporarily get out of the way while they resolve a couple cases. The fact he's stepping down, to me, means that these lawsuits are not going to go away immediately, he doesn't mm. think. And maybe, you know, he's concerned that other people might come out of the woodwork. He has said this is purely a money grab. You take him at his word that he thinks that. There has been speculations about the matter and about Diddy cozying up to the feds. This might have offered him protection for his crimes over the years. Poison me, and by the way, y'all done already fuck with me so much. Y'all already black mirrored me. You already made everybody think I'm crazy. You already took my family away. You already separated all my friends. I don't got no celebrity friends. Because when I was on TV, on Instagram saying, I don't know where my child is, and the Kardashians kidnapped my daughter in public, and I didn't have the address of my child, none of these niggas that want to say something Travis now. Travis gave you the address, though? Travis right? gave me the address. Right. But as far as Meek Mills, no. Puff Daddy, whoever, none of these niggas, all you fake hard niggas, fuck you. Wait, Come, wait, no, no, wait. hold on, hold on. Okay. All you fake hard niggas, fuck you. You know what I'm saying? I don't give a fuck who, because you can't shoot nobody anyway. And the reason why you got talks because you did a deal, you fucking fed. You know what I'm saying? That's why you got to come at me, because part of the deal for you to be a do all that, da, 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 and get out of jail is that you promise that you're going to go pull my coat co car. So y'all niggas shut the fuck up about me. Now let me say it calm. You niggas shut the fuck up about, <laughs> you shut the fuck up about Michael. Right. Tucker even mimics Diddy that he thinks his money would shield him. Yeah. Money worshippers are so stupid. Oh, my wealth will protect me. Okay. Yeah. yeah. How many people have thought that? A lot. Jeffrey Epstein thought that. Yeah. Everybody thinks that. Yeah. That's the lie of wealth. It's going to protect you. Diddy's like, oh, they're not going to do anything to me. And watch what's going to happen to Diddy next. Did you see his apology I haven't video? been following the Diddy. Yeah. Well, Mr. they showed Diddy. a video of, of, uh, of I know you, you probably, obviously, probably listen to a lot of hip hop. You give me the vibes of it. But I do. Yeah. yeah so Diddy. Aficionado. Yeah, I can totally see it. So Diddy uh, is, uh, uh, the video comes out of him beating Cassie, his ex-girlfriend. That within 24 hours, they settle for $30 million. And that story was gone like a year ago or something like that. So finally, the video comes out. From 2016, <laughs> this video. He's hitting her in the head, pulling her hair, dragging her middle of the hotel. Who I beats don't women? Like, I don't, I don't want to be racist or anything, but like you're not supposed yeah. to beat women, right? Yeah. Well, you know, Diddy, a few years ago, was commenting on Chris Brown and Rihanna's controversy on Ellen DeGeneres. And he says, you know, let's just pray for them because we don't know what they're going through. Let's pray for them before we assume what they're going through. Let's just pray for them. So 
Maybe that's what he's going through right now. And then they leaked the video. So all these guys that grew up yeah. with single mothers that are, are really mad at women. <coughs> Sorry. What do you think of the ongoing allegations against P. Diddy? Do you think more people will come forward? Stick around to find out.